This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, and verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver. And as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Verse 18, their bows also shall dash young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eyes shall not spare children. I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh. Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. Shalom to you brothers out there that are laboring, enduring the elements, making your body a living sacrifice, trying to seal the elect, making your calling election assure, seeking out your own salvation, as well as you sisters that are learning, listening, applying, being obedient to your husbands. Shalom, Shalom, okay? So we're going to dive into uh, this lesson here, you know, going into, uh, you know, uh, some of these nations, man, how, you know, uh, these nations are, are they have their eyes set on babylon you know they're, they're they're and they're mad you know the nations are mad man you know ba babylon has been um been a golden cup in the lord's hand you know it made the whole world drunken okay which i'm gonna bring that precept out uh, a little later but um we're gonna uh you know i just read uh you know uh just read the book of isaiah you know start you know the 13th chapter starting at the 17th verse you know, which, you know, stirring up the Medes, which, you know, that's uh, your modern day, you know, talking about Russia, you know. And one way he's done it is he put the spirit on Babylon to poke the bear, you know. And, uh, you know, the scriptures also says he will put the hooks in their, in their jaws, man. Make them fight, okay. But uh, I came across this article, this is Newsweek, and it says Russian state TV threatens nuclear strike on U.S., okay. And then this was an article uh, yesterday, okay? It says, a Kremlin propagandist has issued the latest nuclear threat against the West regarding the war in Ukraine, warning that the U.S. can be in danger of a Russian missile attack, okay? So, hey, you know, that's why I read this here in the book of Isaiah, you know, the 13th chapter, you know, him stirring up the meats. But look, it says, their bows also shall dash young men to pieces, okay? What are your bows? This is... Uh, this is, these are going to be, you know, uh, them uh, sending, uh, you know, shooting off those uh, those missiles, you know, over this way, you know, dashing young men to pieces and shall not have pity on the fruit of the womb because, hey, those missiles ain't going to have feelings. They're not going to say, oh, no, let let me not go down there. There's children down there. No, man, it's, it's, it's not that their eyes are not going to spare children. Okay. All right, this is another uh, article here. And it says North Korea says it has simulated a nuclear missiles, uh, nuclear missile attack to warn U.S. of nuclear war danger. So not only Russia, but also you got uh, North Korea giving a warning over to Babylon. This was on the 2nd of September. It says North Korea said Sunday it has simulated a nuclear missile attack to warn the U.S. of nuclear war danger. The country launched several cruise missiles, some of them equipped with mock, mock nuclear warheads, state media outlet KCNA uh, said, describing the exercise as a simulation of a tactical nuclear attack. The exercises were meant to warn the enemies of the actual nuclear war danger. KCNA reported the Central Military Convention uh, of the Workers' Party of Korea as saying, it, it said the exercises were conducted at dawn on Saturday and involved two long-range uh, strategic cruise missiles with mock uh, nuclear warheads. The staged nuclear uh, attack was in response to joint military exercises conducted by the United States and South Korea, which right now, North and South Korea are at odds, okay? But South Korea is an ally to Babylon. So, you know, and, and one of the things about Babylon, Babylon... Uh, has these certain allies because so that they could set up bases there because you know Babylon keeps its eyes on its enemies but see the uh a lot of these nations are, uh are, are are a lot stronger than they were you know uh Babylon was once that super that super power it's super military you know but they're all they're scattered out which they think that that's a good thing but really it's it's bad because they're leaving themselves vulnerable you're all you're at, you're all over the place but the thing about it is you know you look at at the homeland and they're going to be left defenseless you know 
and, and especially now more than ever they pushing this lifestyle you know transgenders and all this stuff it, within the military they done became soft your so-called sergeants and generals and stuff in this army they all got uh, they men they got husbands and stuff they meant men with men women with women and, and stuff in the military going off you know meanwhile you got russia military you know they over uh doing push-ups with bears and doing workouts with grizzly bears man like that's that just shows you the testosterone over there and then the, over here is they putting stuff in the food and stuff messing with your hormones and all that just wicked man and it says uh hold on it says the recklessness and in danger dangerous nature of <coughs> do salak you Okay, the stage, uh, the, the recklessness and danger. <coughs> Woo. Man, I've been dealing with a, a sinus infection, y'all, so Salaki, you know. But, uh, you know, hey, this lesson this ain't gonna stop this lesson from coming out. But it says the, rec the recklessness and dangerous nature of, of uh, the confrontation hysteria recently betrayed by the U.S. and gangsters of the <laughs> Republic of Korea are unprecedented in history kcna said in reference to south korea it's it cited a written drill order issued by the military commission that stressed the importance of the north korean exercise all right and that's all i'm gonna really read on that you know but uh you know babylon man you you becoming more and more uh despised amongst the people man you know, this is Obadiah 1 and 2, and it says, Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen that are greatly despised. You know, you're hated by your own people, which technically the Russians are your people. You know, they're Edomites too. But, you know, it also says um, that uh, it also says that a kingdom divided shall not stand, you know, because they all, at all these Edomite, the whole Ed the Edomite empire and the Edomite kingdom is, is um, at odds with each other. So a uh, kingdom divided shall not stand, okay? You know, that's what the scriptures tell you. You know, you can read that in the book of Mark. You know, but, um, you know, I, I've made these small among the heathen that are greatly despised. You know, and these nations are beginning to hate this base man. Okay. Another another uh, country here is Ghana. Okay. And um, you you can't really find an article. Now, you can watch like a video uh, um, on, on YouTube. But this was back on the 19th of uh, of August, and this shows you that you know these devils control the information because you're not able to uh, so look, look up certain things. So, you know these countries are beginning to threaten them, and, and, and they're trying to hide that. Like they they want to make it seem as if everything's all good with Africa, but a lot of these countries are, are bucking up against them. You have Kenya that are bucked up against them. Um, you know you got some of those other countries in West Africa that are pushing like the French out. And stuff like that you know getting kicking them out of their country but this is uh ghana now ghana's beginning to uh and it says ghana uh mp warns of re retaliation if the u.s impose sanctions due to their uh lgbtq uh bill which you know they are uh you know they're they're not with the whole lifestyle thing and see and this is what they're trying to push on these people this is why a lot of them are, are uh, in support of uh, Putin, you know, like South uh, Africa as well. You know, they they talking about uh, killing Edomites down there. You know, you, them, them Zulus, man, that's some Zulu tribes. You know, that, that's a Hamite. But you got some Jakes down there too. But that, like I said, that's another lesson. Um, but uh, you know, a lot of our people are over in. Uh, we still got people in West Africa. You know, in, in Ghana, Nigeria, and stuff like that. You know, the Congo's, Ivory Coast. Uh, you know, Mali. But uh. It says uh, on D roll on o Oganga, if I'm saying his name right, reports on Ghana. Uh, all right, reports on Ghana warning that the U.S. that the U.S. that they will respond if they impose sanctions on them for their LGBTQ bill. Okay, you know, and see the thing about it, it just shows you that Babylon is pushing a, an agenda out on these nations. This is Revelations. Uh, uh, chapter 11 verse 8 and it says and their dead bodies shall lie in the street which uh uh, uh, uh uh hold on wait a minute let me read that again it says uh and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city and that great city is, is babylon okay 
you know, Babylon the Great, okay? In that great city, which, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And to break that down, you know, Sodom, because of what they're pushing, obviously, you know, like that article, you know, uh, those countries over there are not going for that. You know, uh, uh, a lot of those countries, you can be put to death for it, you know? And this is what Babylon is, is trying to uh, stop over there. They're trying to push the lifestyle on those people. And then and they're standing up. They're like, hey, you, hey, we don't we don't rock like that. You know? Okay? Sodom in Egypt. And in the Egypt part, which Egypt just means bondage. And uh this is why we know this when it's speaking of this here, they're talking it's talking about America because they had the Israelites into captivity. You know, starting with the northern kingdom and worked their way down to the uh, southern kingdom. You know, you can go back, you know, in history and, and see that. Okay? And it says, where also our Lord was crucified. And how did they crucify Yahweh Because we know, you can say, well, Yahweh wasn't crucified over here in America. You know, they crucified him again by uh, changing his images and changing his name. You know, they crucified him all over again. And they got people walking around wearing crosses and things like that, which all that is just nothing more than uh, idolatry. Okay, so that's talking about America, but America is the one that's uh, it's, it called this place a spiritual Sodom because they're pushing that. Okay, and you know I read um, I brought out Isaiah the 13th chapter starting with the 17th verse, uh, uh, where they you know Yahweh about you shall stir up the meads, but I didn't get to the verse 19 because I wanted to save it for this exact point. Okay, this is Isaiah 13 and verse 19. It says in Babylon. Which this is talking about uh, Babylon the Great, you know, this in Babylon, the glory of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldees, excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. And why is he going to, he referenced Sodom and Gomorrah because they're pushing that lifestyle here now more than ever. You know, you can't speak out. I just did a lesson where, you know, they're, con they, they're condemning you. They, they're uh, prosecuting people in certain countries, you know, just for uh, putting Bible verses up and speaking out against that lifestyle. You know, so this is uh, where this is where we're headed. You know, but Yahabashim Yahusha is not um, playing with this place. Now, this is another article here. You know, I brought out the stuff going on with Russia. You know, sending showing uh, sending threats to the U.S. as well as North Korea. Now, check this out. You know, and this this is an article that came out this morning. It says Kim Kim Jong Un, which you know he's the leader of North Korea expected to meet with Putin, which he's the leader of Russia, to discuss arms deals. So th they're, they're discussing arms deals now, them two. See, all these nations are banding together, all right? And it says, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un may travel to Russia for a summit with President Vladimir Putin, as U.S. officials said, in a trip that would underscore deepening uh, cooperation as the two isolated leaders are locked in separate confrontations with the U.S. See, they're both at odds with the U.S. right now. U.S. officials also said that Russia is seeking to buy ammunition from North Korea to refill reserves drained by its war with Ukraine. In return, experts said North Korea will likely want food and energy shipments and transfers of sophisticated weapons technology. A meeting with Putin would be Kim's first summit with, with a foreign leader since North Korea closed its borders in January 2020. They meet for the first time uh, in April or they met for the first time in April 2019, two months after Kim Jong or Kim's high-stakes nuclear diplomacy with with then U.S. President Donald Trump collapsed. Okay, and there's more on this, but like I said, I just wanted to bring bring that that key part out. Okay, but check this out. This is Second Ezra, the 16th chapter, and I'm gonna start at the 13th uh, verse, and it says, "For strong is." Is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they began to be shot into the ends of the world. Okay? So a lot of these countries are arming themselves. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, and now that a lot of these African nations, you know, like I was bringing out about them over there in Africa, they all are, are teaming up with Putin because they said Putin is doing uh, arms deals with them, training and showing them. Uh, technology you know uh arms technology a lot of them i think uh kenya now got um you know nuclear weapons and they said that they wasn't getting all that uh access uh you know working with babylon babylon wasn't teaching it showing them anything 
If anything, they want them to see what the Babylon want is for your nation to be not armed, but be depending on them, you know, so they can oppress you. And then they push their wine on you to where, you know, you live that alphabet lifestyle. So again, it says, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot at, uh, into the ends of the, of the uh, world. Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they have come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. So a lot of places are going to be set on fire, you know, and you got like these fires, but no, that's not going to be nothing in compared to when them... Um, nuclear missiles be dropped every uh everywhere you know and it says uh verse 16 like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer returneth not backward even so the plagues that are are uh that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again and, and those plagues is going to be by way of those missiles you know so that's what this is talking about here you know like i said um uh, earlier about how babylon has been a golden cup Okay, this is Jeremiah 51 and 7. It says, Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand, you know, which because Yahabah Shimiah Shai is a balanced guy, you know, he has, you, you got good, you got evil, and he controlled both parties, man. You know, the righteous are your Israelites, and you got the wicked, which is Esau, Edom. It's a balance, Jacob and Esau, you know, with Esau being the end of the world, and Jacob's going to be the beginning of it that follow up, you know, so the wicked are ruling right now, okay? You know, going back to uh, Job, uh, the ninth chapter. All right. But it says Babylon had been a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the word, uh, all the earth uh, drunken. OK, so the, the whole earth has been drunken by this man. You know, a lot of people have forsaken their culture and their ways to follow the ways of Babylon. You got, you know, the Asian man walking around wearing suits, you know, like like Esau, you know, you got him, him doing it as well, you know. You got Elam doing it as well, you know, when they have their own customs and, and their own way of dressing, you know, but now they they dress like 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 Esau Edom, wearing suits and ties and stuff, okay, and conform to his ways, all right, but now they're coming back out of it like, hey, you know, this this leads to, to death and destruction, okay, they made all the earth drunken, it says the nations have drunken of her wine, Therefore, the nations are mad. And see, they're mad. They're waking up and they're seeing they're mad. Okay? So, you know, all this is going to lead to what? Uh, World War III. All right? Because these nations are going to all start fight, beginning to fight each other. But a lot of these uh, nations that are, are going to are allying with each other, they're going to turn on, on Babylon. You know? You could read about that also in uh, Obadiah, the seventh verse, you know? Because a lot of these nations were once allies with Babylon and they're going to turn on Babylon. But this is Revelation 11 and verse 14. It says the second world was passed, which that's uh, World War II it has passed. And behold, the third world cometh quickly. So it, it's, it's a matter of time. That's a prophecy, like I said in the, le the uh, first lesson. This is a prophe prophecy that we are waiting on, you know, is World War III. You know, which I believe they're already in, in the process of World War III. They're in the first stages of it, but it's not, it's, it's not, it's not really physical where all the nations are coming but a lot of these nations are beginning to band together you know it, it's coming man all right and uh this is the book of joel the i'm a, the third chapter and i'm gonna start at the ninth verse and i'll end it on this you know lord willing this lesson is edifying to you okay but uh joel the third chapter i'm gonna start the ninth verse and it says proclaim ye this among the gentiles prepare war wake up the mighty man let all the men of war draw near let them come up so see this is what's going to happen beat your plowshares into swords okay and swords can can it doesn't mean that and like an actual sword you know like you know that sword uh the word sword really just means weapon okay and weapon can be the the modern day the gun uh tanks missiles you know uh these uh these choppers helicopters you know with with uh you know, uh, guns and stuff like that attached to them and missiles as well. All right. And your pruny hooks into spears. All right. Let the weak say, which the weak has been these other nations, you know, because like I said, Babylon has been that the hammer of the whole earth. All right. Let the weak say, I am strong. Okay. And this is what they're saying now. They're beginning to flex. All right. And they're flexing on Babylon. That's why they're doing these drills and, and, and sending out threats. Okay. 
Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about thither. Cause thy mighty ones uh, to come down, O Lord. Okay? And the mighty ones is Esau, Edom, and them, and they're getting ready to come down. They're gonna they're gonna fall. Uh, oh how uh how uh, art thou fallen, O Lucifer, son of the morning, that has weakened the nations? You know, this devil's getting is fallen, man. You know, Babylon's fallen, this man's kingdom is fallen. Okay? But these nations are banded together, man. And this is why you have articles like this, you know. This is why you see Russia, you know, state TV threatens nuclear strike on U.S. Okay? This is why, you know, you got North Korea says it has simulated a nuclear uh, missile attack to warn U.S. of nuclear war danger. Okay? This is why Ghana is, is warns the U.S. of retaliation. You know, you got Ghana. You know? This is why, you know... This right here, this is why, you know, these nations are coming together, making these arms deals, you know, Babylon's through, man, you know, like, like I said, uh, uh, a moment ago, you know, second Ezra, uh, six and nine, it says, you know, for Esau is the end of the world. Okay. And Jacob is the beginning of the followers. So Jacob got next, man. And, and this is your time. Your time is up, Esau. Your time is up. All right. So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all honor, all glory, and all praise unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders of the nation of Israel. Shalom to you, brothers and sisters out there, okay? Until the next one. Shalom.